What's up, guys? I saved my Iron Wolf caches till I hit World Tier 3, and from the first one, I got this completely insane, unique helm, the Starfall Coronet, which basically has the power to turn your meteor into an apocalyptic meteor storm, dropping up to 10 meteors with a single cast. So of course I had to stop everything I was doing and make a build for this, and after testing a couple things out, I was able to do the level 70 capstone at level 50 with no paragon points, and completely skipped World Tier 3. I then had some of the most fun I've ever had playing this game, solo farming world tier 4 helltides with this build. It has some of the most satisfying burst out of any sort build I've ever played, especially in this level range. This build is designed specifically to crush the mid game from levels 50 to 100 in world tier 4. The one downside is you're a bit of a squish ball, however if you use your cooldowns, dodge and kiting effectively, you can avoid almost all damage and we all know the best defense is a good offense anyway, so we're just going to crush everything before it can touch us. Alright, diving in, this build was completely designed around the insane effect on the Starfall Coronet Unique Sorcerer Helmet. Basically what this does is add a cooldown to Meteor while removing the mana cost and adds three additional Meteors that drop around the first one. In addition, Meteor's Enchantment Effect, which is the 8% lucky hit chance to drop a Meteor, will now drop a second Meteor when it procs. And the same thing with the first Meteor upgrade, which is Enhanced Meteor. So if you hit three or more enemies with your Meteor, there's a 30% chance for another Meteor to fall in the same spot. The Starfall Coronet triggers an extra Meteor for this proc as well. Basically what this means is anytime you cast Meteor, you are going to get four guaranteed with a 30% chance at two more from Enhanced Meteor, and then all those Meteors and every other spell you cast has an 8% lucky hit chance of dropping two more Meteors on top of all that. So on a group of mobs at both of these proc just once, you are getting eight Meteors with a single Meteor cast. And not only are you dropping a fuckload of Meteors with one button, but because we are running Aspect of Shattered Stars, every one of those Meteors creates several additional Meteorites that do a percentage of the Meteor's damage and burn enemies. So if you're dropping 8 Meteors, you're getting like 24 Meteorites to come along with them. We're also running Aspect of Three Curses, so all these Meteors raining down will have 40% increased crit damage, which is doubled to 80% against healthy targets. And if you have a two-hander, putting this Aspect on your weapon will increase this effect to an insane 80% base and 160% crit damage against healthy targets. We'll also be leveraging Esu's Ferocity to get this insane attack speed stack that's going to be active most of the time. Now, Starfall Coronet is the main unique you need to make this build work, but I found some really awesome synergy with another unique as well, which are these gloves, the Pain Gorgeous Gauntlets. This is basically going to make your Meteors, Fireball, and Hydra attacks mark enemies. Then when you hit a marked enemy with your Firebolt, your basic attack, that Firebolt's damage will be applied to all of the marked enemies and be amplified by 200%. Because we are hitting basically everything early on with our non-basic skills, Meteor, Fireball, and Hydra, most everything will be marked so our Firebolt essentially becomes a very strong cleave skill. Now to really lean into this idea of an empowered Firebolt cleave, we are running several more aspects to boost the power of our basic attack and synergize with the Pain Gorger's Gauntlets. The main one of these is going to be Aspect of the Moonrise, which makes attacking with a basic skill add 4% attack speed, stacking 5 times up to 20%. When we reach 5 stacks, we enter a Blood Rage, gaining 80% basic skill damage and 15% move speed for 10 seconds. Remember, we're already getting 50% attack speed from Esu's Ferocity, so with these two stacked, we'll be casting at 50% and Firebolting at 70% increased attack speed. And remember, if we hit everything first with a Meteor, Fireball, or Hydra, our super fast Firebolts will be echoed to all those enemies because they were marked by the Pain Gorger Gauntlets effect. And every one of those hits should give us two mana back from our Flickering Firebolt upgrade. To really lock in the power of this attack speed stack, we want to find boots with the primary affix Attacks Reduce Evades Cooldown. This will make it so your super fast attacking will bring your dodge off cooldown every couple seconds, making you much harder to hit and giving you much more mobility than you would otherwise have. We are also running a defensive and a utility aspect to stack with this basic attack idea. The aspect of Might on Pants will give us 20% damage reduction every time we cast a basic skill, so we will pretty much always have this up, and then the Hectic aspect on Chest gives us 2 seconds of CDR on our Meteor Charges, Flame Shield, or Teleport every time we cast 5 basic skills. The last aspect we are running is Exploiter's Aspect on Boots, mainly for the 40% increased damage multiplier against Unstoppable Elites and Bosses. The 20% increased crowd control duration will also help our immobilized stack, which we'll be getting a lot of value from with the Wizard's Meteor and Crippling Flames upgrades. There's also some really sick synergy between this protection skill and the Starfall Coronet because it turns Meteor into a cooldown. So now every time you drop your Meteors, you're going to get a free 30% barrier for 3 seconds with it. You'll also get this same barrier after you teleport stacked with the 30% damage reduction from the Shimmering Teleport upgrade. 
All right, now let's quickly talk about the rotation, which is fairly straightforward. The main priority is always going to be trying to drop meteor charges on big groups of enemies or priority targets. A lot of the times, one charge will be enough to wipe everything, but if you see a big group of elites, calling in two charges on top of each other will pretty much guarantee their total destruction because you're going to be getting 10 to 20 meteors within a couple seconds of each other. Once the meteors are en route, spam fireball a couple times till your oom. Right about now is when everything is starting to die, so your Esu's ferocity attack speed will be activated. Use this amped attack speed to start unleashing super fast firebolts, which will be detonating the charges placed on everything by your Pangorger Gauntlets. As each mob dies, they will also explode for a 50% fireball to everything around them. Also, anywhere you call down a meteor will be burning, and anything near that that got hit with meteorites will also be burning. For boss fights, I recommend switching this fireball enchantment over to firebolt really quick to turn that AoE cleave into consistent single target burn damage. Now start to weave firebolt and fireball to finish everything off while continuing to proc pain or gauntlet stacks. Then look for the next group of giant mobs to drop another apocalyptic meteor storm. Remember to try to keep your hydras up in between all this. I like to spawn them ahead of myself before I go in. It feels like this helps group the mobs in a better way uh, than sort of body pulling them myself, which is sort of the main reason why I'm using Hydra here. If you were wanting to drop an ability to try something else with this build, that would probably be the first one I would start with because we're not really building into the conjuration side of things. Use Flame Shield as an initiation tool to get in the middle of big groups of mobs and stun them, and use Teleport as a defensive and CC break to get you out of tricky spots. Remember to try to use your dodge on cooldown to reposition, which will literally be every 2-3 to three seconds with the affix on your boots and this attack speed stack. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on the Paragon board because I'm only about halfway through this progression, and there will likely be some tweaks here as we push to endgame content with this build, but this setup will guarantee a very strong early start by maxing out our fire and non-physical damage. The glyphs shown in this Paragon board setup are placed to maximize their value in endgame, but for leveling up in progression, I highly recommend leveling up the Enchanter glyph for the first slot as soon as possible, as this will give you a massive magic damage increase very early on, especially once the glyph hits level 15 and gains its second range. For your second glyph to level and slot into the Searing Heat board, I actually recommend Destruction first over Pyromaniac because of how heavily this build is relying on crit and crit damage. This glyph also pairs perfectly with the Searing Heat Legendary node we just scooped on this board. Slot the Destruction Glyph here first and get the surrounding Dex nodes as you level it up after your Enchanter Glyph. Once you make it up to this Glyph slot on the Burning Instinct board, optimize the surrounding nodes for Dex like shown here and move your Destruction Glyph up to this slot, then slot in the Pyromaniac Glyph into the Searing Heat board and grab this 25 surrounding Willpower to activate the bonus effect for the Fire Damage Multiplier. The other legendary node we are grabbing is the Enchantment Master, which feels pretty high value with this build. This will make enemies we kill explode in a 60% fireball instead of 50%, and will increase our lucky hit chance for additional meteors from 8 to 10%. And remember, every meteor we get this way brings an additional meteor with it from the Starfall Coronet effect, essentially doubling the value of this upgrade. And when we switch our Fireball Enchantment over to Firebolt to increase our single target damage for big elites or boss fights, the Enchantment Master Legendary Node will increase the burn effect from 23 up to 28%. Finally, let's quickly discuss itemization and the new seasonal tempering mechanic. The stats on affixes are way more simplified now, so to keep things even more simple, just look for intelligence, max life, and damage as your primary affixes. I'm going to be leaning heavily into the damage stat, trying to min-max that with Masterworking, but haven't quite got there yet. For tempering, there are two recipes that are really big for this build, which are the Pyromancy Augment on Weapon and the Offensive Pyromancy Finesse Recipe. The Pyromancy Augment you can only roll on your weapon, so I pray that the RNG gods are in your favor for this one because it really blows to get Abyss Weapon and then miss your tempering rolls. Luckily, there are actually several options within the Pyromancy Augments that are very good for this build, so if you get the Firebolt or Fireball Cast upgrade, they will have a chance to shoot an additional projectile, and if you get the Meteor Size, it will really max out your Meteor Cleave. I am rocking the Firebolt Temper in most of these clips, so if you watch closely, I am often procking extra Firebolts with my basic attack. The cool thing about rocking a one-hander with an offhand is since you have two weapon slots to temper, you have a higher chance at scoring the one you really need on at least one of them. Now, if you get down to your last tempering roll on a really good weapon and haven't gotten the one you want yet, it might be worth considering just doing Elemental Surge for that last roll, because that will at least guarantee some damage value, rather than getting something like Incinerate or Firewall, which will have absolutely zero value with this build. For the offensive tempering category, we are going all in on the Pyromancy Finesse recipe. The cool thing about this one is that all the rolls except for the fire damage over time are very good with this build. Additionally, you can temper this recipe on gloves, necklace, and rings, giving you four very strong additional fire fixes. 
Now I did a little math here guys with the new damage formula to determine what would be the highest value uh, max roll temper we could get for this slot right now. Uh, and this is what I found. So with the damage formula changes, additional crit damage is no longer multiplicative. It is in the same bucket with all your other damage modifiers. So you can now compare crit directly against other affixes, but in order to do this, you have to determine the uptime because when you don't crit, crit damage does nothing. So to determine the actual value of your critical strike damage, you need to multiply it by the uptime of this effect, which is your critical strike chance. Consider getting max rolls for both fire and crit damage with this pyromancy finesse temper. Fire damage provides a 55% additive increase with all fire spells, and crit damage adds an 85% additive increase with all fire spells, but only when they crit. In a full fire build, the 55% fire damage has 100% uptime, meaning it's always active on every spell, so you're always benefiting from the full effect. In order to compare the value of our crit damage against this, we need to multiply it by our crit chance. So let's say in your build between your gear skills and Paragon board, you have a 50% crit chance. Multiplying this by the crit damage affix of 85% that we are considering gives us a total 42.5% damage increase. This is 12.5% lower than the increase we get from the 55% fire damage that has 100% uptime. So we know for sure that the fire damage affix is better in this instance. But what if you were at a 75% crit chance instead of 50? This would make the effective value of the crit damage affix almost 64%. So now the crit damage affix is offering more total value to your damage than the flat fire affix, but only once our uptime has exceeded a certain threshold. Leveraging this idea, we can be confident that the highest value rolls we are going to be able to get right now on this pyromancy finesse upgrade are going to come from the flat fire damage increase because it has 100% uptime. Crit and mastery damage will be close seconds, but will provide a lower total bonus to overall damage because crit damage only applies when we critically strike and mastery damage only applies to our meteor, whereas flat fire damage literally increases the damage of everything in our kit by 55%, including our crits and meteor, and is active 100% of the time. Now there may be a point in time where our crit chance is high enough for the crit damage to overtake the flat fire damage in effectiveness, but in this instance we can see from the math that we just did that this will not happen until we exceed somewhere around the 65% crit chance. Taking a look at a couple of the other categories, under defensive there is this max life roll on worldly endurance, and then chance to heal and flame shield duration on the pyromancy endurance, all of which would be decent options. Under utility there is this worldly fortune one that will basically enable you to randomly generate more CC, and then under mobility there is this sorcerer motion, which has slightly higher move speed cap than the natural motion, and also has a roll for teleport CDR. The other really important thing about boots with this build is you want to find ones with the primary affix of attacks reducing evades cooldown. Like we already mentioned with our attack speed stack, this will let you dodge every couple seconds as you are attacking super fast. We don't really need a resource temper with this build, and anywhere you can use a resource temper, you can also use an offensive temper, so I recommend just leveraging those slots for the pyromancy finesse recipe like we discussed. Boom, that's all I got for this one. I hope it was useful. I'm really trying to increase my video production rate, so instead of spending weeks to make a single video, I'm really trying to release these ideas as I go. So this is definitely more of a mid-game build focused on absolutely crushing levels 50 through 100 at max pace, and will likely evolve into a build with a bit more defensives and utility as we look to push higher tier endgame content. I will for sure be continuing to mess around with this build and hone it in, and I do plan to release a final version of the build at level 100 with everything dialed for endgame progression, so if you're interested in something like that, consider sticking around. I also got this teleport wand that I can't wait to use, so I'm probably going to try some crazy build with that for the last chunk of levels before 100. If you guys want to help support the channel, a like and a comment goes a long way, and I always love to see those, but besides that, thank you so much for watching, remember to take care of yourself, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.